It's like a blast from a not-so-distant past. 1,500 people packed together in an indoor arena in Leipzig for a concert of German singer-songwriter Tim Bensko. The fans here are volunteers, part of Restart 19, a study to see if and how big events can be held safely in the era of COVID-19. Concert going is my hobby. I go to 20, 30 concerts a year. And now that it's not possible because of Corona, I want to support this study to help find out how we can still hold concerts. Safety measures, including a negative corona test and a thermoscan, were needed to get inside. <laughs> Everyone taking part in this experiment, even the press, have been given these medical-grade face masks and been ordered to keep them on at all times. We've also been given bottles of disinfectant, which we use to clean our hands as often as possible. Contact tracers worn around the neck track the distance between concert goers to identify where in the area fans group too closely together. It doesn't sound very rock and roll, but the one pop star present was satisfied with the results. This summer we had to endure drive-in concerts, so for us this feels like the first step towards normality. Restart 19 is not a perfect experiment. Wearing masks at a concert and keeping social distance are not real-world conditions. This is the first step. You can either say we have no data, or you can say we have data that doesn't quite correspond to everyday life, but gets you half the way there. And going halfway is better than not going forward at all. Singer Tim Bensko and the scientists carrying out this experiment don't think it's the answer to all our corona problems. But the results of this study, expected in about six to eight weeks, could make it possible to hold concerts, live sports, and other big public events again, and to do so safely. And Scott uh, Roxborough was there in Leipzig. He joins me now. Hi there, Scott. Mm -hmm. I imagine it was probably really nice to see some live music again after a while. so many months. But, you know, we saw people in masks. They were having to sit down. Did this feel like a real concert? Yeah, I think the first thing I noticed was um, instead of smelling pot when I walked into the <laughs> arena, I smelled disinfectant. Uh, that, that's a big jump from how we used to experience uh, pop concerts. Um, yeah, I mean, it's very different, obviously, and it does have a sort of a bit more st sterile environment. Um, but I have to say, um, I'm not a huge fan of Tim Bensko, but he did put on a show, and when the lights go down and the people start dancing and clapping around you, you do have to feel like, oh, this is almost like how it used to be, but still not quite, uh, uh, not quite normal. And we have to keep in mind this was a scientific experiment. Who, who paid for it? Uh, well, um, it's, uh, yeah, a very big scientific experiment, actually. It cost a, um, a million euros to put this on for the day. Um, and the cost is split between the two governments of, of Saxony, where Leipzig is located, and Saxony-Anhalt, its neighbouring uh, state in, in uh, eastern Germany. Um, and uh, basically, uh, they're putting up all this money because they want to find uh, have some sort of database that they can use to basically help out the uh, events industries in their states, to help all these uh, thousands of people who are out of work, who can't go back to work, who would be uh, setting up concerts like this um, and they want to give them some sort of um, scientific basis to say we can develop a plan that will allow you to be safe but allow you to put on these type of events again. And as you say these industries have taken just a massive hit in this pandemic. Um, when, uh, what are they trying to get from the data and when can we expect to see uh, any results? Um, well, fairly soon for a, such a large experiment. I mean, they said they're crunching stuff like four tetrabytes of data, which I don't even know how big that number is. It's <laughs> huge. Um, um, but they expect in uh, four to six weeks they'll have the first uh, um, data, uh, uh, they'll anal analyze the data such where they can, they can uh, say something about what the study uh, that took place uh, uh, on Saturday. Um, and um, basically what they want to do is they want to identify where the risks are because at the moment people don't really know. They don't know um, what hotspots, what are the hotspots, what are the dangerous areas in an event like uh, like a big concert or a big sporting event. Um, and so with this, they're basically creating, um, with the data they've gathered from people with all their tracers, they're going to create mathematical models that they are going to use to show to say, okay, if you take this type of approach, if you have, say, two entrances and everyone crams in, 
where the danger zones, how, how dangerous is it. If you have eight entrances and you do maybe uh, a different model modeling or have different types of uh, hygienic controls, uh, how safe is that? And with these models, they hope to be able to go to then the politicians and say, look, we can do it this way and this is safe enough and then maybe we can have these type of events again. Super interesting. Scott Roxborough from DW Culture, thank you.